it did well, did numbers on Instagram. Yeah. And then someone ripped it off and put it on TikTok and they got like five or six hundred K views overnight. Now I'm like, oh shit, I've got to go on TikTok. The first few weeks I was just like, oh, you know, like do I really want to stay in the fitness industry? Like, yeah, yeah, you know, after like during like six, seven lockdowns, I was like, dude, I was talking to my wife and I'm just like, I don't think. Like, this is probably like the last straw. Raise your awareness to how much you get sucked into a narrative. Of course. And it's like, you know, always question every narrative. As soon as you're absolute on a belief, I believe that you should challenge it. Like, in terms of, like, challenge it from and, and see a different perspective of it. Because otherwise, you're just going to, you could just live there for the rest of your life and it could not even be true. But you're going to look better. You're going to feel better. If, if your clothes feel better, you're going to yeah. feel more confident. If you're more confident, your outlook on life is just, and perception is just going to be that much better. So that together we have clarity, direction, and success way beyond what we ever previously thought possible. Here's your host, Frankie Lee. First things first, guys, before we get started with this podcast, do me a solid favor and subscribe to this on whatever platform you're listening to it right now, whether that's YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, I'd appreciate if you just hit that subscribe button and it lets me know that the content that I'm putting out for you guys is hitting your ears at the right time. Much love. This podcast is sponsored by contentremover.com. So whether you're looking to remove any images, videos, search results, fake Instagram accounts, get in touch with us at contentremover.com. Welcome back to the Frankie Lee Podcast. Today, guys, I'm fucking hyped. I really have. Honestly, I've got off a plane. I'm, a li- I'm not jet lagged because I've only been on a two hour fucking flight, right? But I'm a, I'm a little bit hyped for this podcast and to introduce you to this fella today. I'll tell you for why, right? Every time I go on TikTok, every time I go on Instagram, every time I look on my mate's stories, they're sharing this guy. He's fucking, his content is so on point and reson- resonates with every man and his dog. I'm telling you. Ted Aesthetics, welcome to the podcast, my man. Thank you for having me, man. Mate, it's a pleasure. In, in, tell him your real name. Tell him your real name. Ah, uh, my real name. My real name is Rashid. Rashid, yeah. Yeah, Rashid. Yeah, I know. Better known as Teddy. Better known as Teddy. <laughs> like, mate, honestly, your content on TikTok and Instagram has fucking blown up. Has blown it's everywhere, up. man. It's everywhere in the last in the last what eight to twelve months? It's been yeah, well, eight months. Eight months going on to the my ninth month now. Yeah, mate. Yeah. Honestly, I had like because obviously I did. I'd, Mate, I, I first came across one of your videos. You was talking about the gyms or something, something, something to do with, with this gym means this, this, this. And honestly, mate, it's fucking funny and stuff. And everything, you, everything you do, whether it's about food, gym, like parenthood, it just all seems to it all seems to land. What kind of? How did you even get into like making these videos and start putting them on like TikTok and start getting the idea to get this thing going? The crazy part is I actually didn't start on TikTok. I started on Instagram Reels. Um, yeah, just started uploading a couple of videos. Um, got a few views. Um, you know, friends sharing it around amongst friends. Yeah, um, yeah, just always been a class clown. So I'm like, you know what? I'll make a couple of Reels, have a laugh with it. And then I made one about like Melbourne's lockdown. And I just, like, yeah. just made it like a very small, like I think the clip was like probably 17 seconds. Yeah. And someone, like it did well, did numbers on um, Instagram. Yeah. And then someone ripped it off and put it on TikTok and they got like five or 600K views overnight. Yeah, man. And um, then I'm like, oh, shit, I've got to go on TikTok. And that's how I went, like the progression went from Instagram to TikTok. And then, you know, we, you make one good, one good video or one video that blows up and then people keep like they recommending. Want, they, yeah, they, they want, want more. more. They, su- they probably suggest content to you. Yeah, they're of probably. course. They'll suggest content and there are some things that, you know, like I'll just have a day or like an observation. Most of my stuff is observational humor. That's why it's probably so relative to a lot of people, especially if you're in Australia, right? Yeah, the, the last the last one you did it that, that really that really dropped in with me was the gym one. You know, yeah. the, the gym, the different gyms and what the different yes. gyms meant. Yeah, like, just stereotypes, man. Yeah, but just stereotyping and it's so true. Like, and, and this, this, this correlates to whatever country you're in, obviously, but obviously for us in Australia, it definitely, it definitely resonates. But mate, like the way that the, it just goes to show you how much opportunity there is out there for people that are willing to step in front of that camera and, and put themselves out there in a position to be seen. Yeah, of course. Um, I feel like there's also opportunity for people that, like, I feel like whenever people do want to make videos, they usually just, oh, what's hot now? Let me just yeah, go and do like what, you know, what's, you know, let me make videos about NFTs or let me make videos about like dancing on TikTok. And it's like, man, there's so much opportunity out there for you to do something that's like 
that's your own you know personal touch to something you don't have to do what everyone else is doing sometimes it's just good to speak your truth yeah, be authentic you, and have a laugh did you did you find did you find your truth though from day one was it something that kind of landed with you like you know your, your sayings and you can't change my mind do you know what I mean like, that, like, that was by accident that was yeah, by accident yeah. but it feels like it's like one of those things that just picked up just, yeah I did it by accident on a couple of videos yeah. and then one of them really blew up on TikTok and people just I made another video and it didn't have and you can't change my mind people were like no 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 this doesn't feel natural yeah so it's yeah. just stuck and like now it's almost like my signature it's almost that that hook right when when i do a video i am you know telling people to stay and watch the rest of this video because you can't change my mind what yeah. i'm about to say is facts yeah what i'm about yeah. to say is stuff it's that we straight say down the yeah, line. yeah straight yeah. down the line this is what you see and if you don't see this then <laughs> you know like it'd be a bit strange but most of the times you know like 99 percent strike rate whatever video i make <laughs> people will be like nah that's that, that's really what it's like. Yeah, and, and you because of that, then you can generally focus on it being something that you know is it needs to resonate in your head. You no, know, would this resonate with every person that's going to listen to it? Of course, yeah. Like to, to parenthood, that. parenthood videos. Like yeah. I, whenever I make a parenthood video, it's like I know every parent feels like this, or you know, this is the way they see things as well. So whenever I do make a video, I try to make it as factual as possible, and it's also uh, like it really is just observations, right? But yeah. as factual as possible, you know, I have the, that conversation. Like if I say, you know, this, pa- you know, this power rate is blue, I'll have that conversation. You'll look at it, be like, yeah, that power rate is blue. Three other people say that power rate is blue. I'll be like, all right, cool. Then this isn't just happening to just me. And it's probably a million people out there that watch my content. It's, it's a great way for people to identify that. I want you guys to listen to that when, when Teddy's saying that, because like, it's so important that, you know, you, you, you can see and spot these trends and, 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 you know, things that resonate with people and you can kind of tell yourself from the start whether things are going to bang or not just from, just from being really insightful into the way you look at the analytics on stuff as well. Yeah, of course. And I feel like if, if you know, there are a lot of topics that are very general, right? The, the way yeah. I make my videos, I want it to be conversational. If you're at a barbecue, I want, it, I want my video to feel like, you know, you're talking with me or, you know, we're talking about this. Yeah. Right. Or, you know, if you're at a cafe with a friend and someone just talk about their coffee and get, like people listen to my video and be like, yeah, no, nah, no, nah, that is, that is what's happening every time we come to this cafe. So yeah, every, every piece of content that I make, I try and make it as an experience, not just a video where, you know, it's just me talking to the, talking to the camera. It's me talking to you. Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. Cause it, anything where, you know, you can fully like, as if, as if, Man, this guy's just talking straight to me. Yeah, he's literally he's literally describing my life and everything that's going <laughs> on in it. Because that's honestly that's when when I started seeing you on I started seeing you on Instagram first. Obviously, followed you on Instagram. I hadn't talked to you at that point. But I, I followed you and followed your stuff. And then I started to see you coming up on my recommendations on TikTok and this. And I was going on there to post podcast content. You know, you go on the platform to post and fuck off because you don't yep. want to be on TikTok. <laughs> and, but you were dragging me into the fucking vortex because your fucking videos were funny. Yeah, and I think it's also a distinctive face as well. Um, yeah, <laughs> whenever yeah. my face pops up, it's like, oh, what's this guy going to talk what's about? What's this guy going to yeah, say so now? It's, yeah. it's 50% of, you can't change my mind. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that means you're going to watch this video all the way to the end to make sure... That oh you know some people watch it in in the sense of like they'll think oh maybe there's that two percent chance that I can probably point out a flaw in that video and then there's people who just like genuinely watch it just to get a laugh but I'm happy for and, and I bet through lockdown it re- like through the lockdown times oh. and through, through through all that kind of time when you was creating these yeah you know, initial the last videos, lockdown in Melbourne yeah, yeah definitely man hit hard. It, it, it obviously hit a lot of people hard they're looking for comedy they're looking to be cheered up <laughs> yeah. at home and obviously that's when the content for you started to really like to kick off definitely so my first few videos that really kicked off were during the start of that last lockdown yeah um you know people in new south wales were home people in victoria were home um i think and obviously you're laid off from, you, you you obviously worked at a gym don't i you? work in the fitness industry so i was laid off at the time um you know i had to like the first few weeks I was just like, oh, you know, the, like, do I really want to stay in the fitness industry? Like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, after yeah, like yeah, yeah. enduring like six, seven lockdowns, I was like, dude, I was talking to my wife and I'm just like, I don't think like, this is probably like the last straw. Like yeah. after this lockdown is probably better off for me to go back. Cause I initially studied community services. Yeah. So I was working like doing community services based work. Um, so I was thinking like, do, like, do I just give in and, you know, go back? to community services and that was open during lockdown because people need, you know, mental health and well-being, need, like need all the support they, they, that they can get during the yeah, lockdowns. Yeah, 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 for sure. And yeah. it's very rewarding work what you do with, with people in that De- environment. Definitely, you know, challenging but also rewarding, rewarding as well. Yeah. So, you know, 
you know, like I can a, see why you got on so well in that industry, though, because you must have cheered them up. Were they were they children or were they adults or a bit, a bit of both? Bit um, of both. I've done a bit of youth type of work. I did a, I did that for three months, but I ne- like I never really clicked with the like my management at the time. Yeah. So every other job that I did were met were mainly with refugees. Yeah. Like people who are brand new to Australia yeah. and people who or post release prisoners. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mate, prison is something I know a lot about. Not because I've been, I have been in there myself, but not as a, not as a prisoner. But I used to teach um, men and women ca- carpentry wow. in jail back in the UK. So yeah. it's something I know, like because these people, like they're they're, you know, you have the opportunity when you're in that environment to give someone a second chance that they would never have had previously. Because you can a, a lot of, a lot of the prisoners will reoffend. Like let's be honest, eighty yeah. percent of them will reoffend. But yeah. there's always those twenty percent in in your class or in or that you can where you can just flip their perspective on something and change their mind or something and give them another opportunity or give them another way of being. Yeah, or or just another outlook, right? Yeah, you know. But most sort of the post release prisoners that I did speak to were, you know, my age or probably like like four or five years older than me. And I'd be like, man, you know, you're still young. You know, the retirement yeah. age is at seventy. You know, like, well, at least by the time we reach it, it'll probably be like 70, 72. And I'm like, you still got like another 40 years of life ahead of you. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, don't yeah. like, don't feel the need. Like, there's no harm in you going to work a minimum wage job and work your way up. I'm like, you know, there is that second chance. And I was working in employment services. So I was really like trying to help like post release. One of their conditions was to see me. Yes, yes. So at the start for them, it's a chore because it's like, oh, I'm only here because it's my condition. And then we'll slowly build off of that and then, you know, build up that relationship and just a bit of banter as well. Or, you know, think like, you know, I'll try and get them you know, like easing back into normal life, yeah. right? And then build up off of that. And then you'll be like, you know what? You like, do you have kids? Yes, I do. Cool. You know, wouldn't you want to just like earn an honest living, you know, th- do it for your kids? Yeah. Uh, and then because they've been in that prison environment, they'll be like, oh, well, like you just saying it. Makes me makes think me think, about, yeah, and that's the same. Beautiful. That's the same concept that I try and put into my, every single one of my videos. When I say something in a video, like I want people to think, like, "Oh man, that's so true," or you yeah. know, like think back to that experience, whether it's parenthood, whether it's coffee, whether it's gyms. You're making what you what you're essentially saying is your biggest gift is to make people reflect on themselves. Yeah, of course, and reflect that we are more we are more alike yeah. than different. Yeah. especially during lockdown like a lot of people were just very angry at each other like a lot of emotional reaction and stuff like that and you know with my content i just want people to you know look and be like wow, we are more alike than yeah. we are different you know i always say you know memes bring the world together yeah cause, yeah because pe- pe- so many people like try see the, the world is designed to create divide so that you fight against one another of course. This is what a lot of people don't see. Like, this is why I don't watch any news or I don't discuss any wars yeah. or anything that's going on in the world because, like, it's, it's like, it, because if I have this opinion, someone has that opinion. Yeah. Now someone's offended. And, and like, everyone wants to get offended these days. Not just that. And I feel like social media has given people, like, a level of, how, how can I explain it? Like, assurance that their opinion is a fact. Yeah. But what you're right is, Merely just your opinion. It's not a fact. However, the past two years with lockdowns, with the things that have, the affairs that have been going on around the world, people genuinely feel like it. Yeah. You know, well, when in reality, no, it's just your opinion. And it's okay to have an opinion, but don't try and play it off as if it's a matter of fact. That, that's, that is a classic point, right? Because here's what social media does, and I need everyone who listens to this to fucking fully understand this. If you go out looking for red cars, it will recommend you more red cars. Of course. And if you go out looking for yellow cars, it will recommend you more yellow cars. So if you're going to, if you're going out to look on social media for something that supports your belief or what you think is true, then it'll always recommend those kind of narratives to you. That's why some people will see pro certain people in the election some people yeah. see pro others and it's yeah. just like and you're cocooned in this world so social media on on the algorithm is it, if you get taken into that into it in that context you get drawn down this road that doesn't really represent who you are because you never ever question well actually who taught me that yeah like who taught me that belief where did that actually stem from and i think that's very important that most people kind of see where do their beliefs actually come from is that actually my belief or was that instilled from my mom my dad my brother my mate that I'm not even mates with anymore, you know? And yeah. There's a lot of that goes on on social media. Uh, with social media, like you said, yes, like if you're looking for yellow cars, you will see more yellow cars. Or 
with the power of the algorithm, they will show you something that'll make you like yellow cars even more. So something the complete opposite yeah. to prove to you why you should like yellow cars. Yeah. So, you know, like the way I explain it is the algorithm will push something you love, something you love, something you love. And then when it sees you tapering back on it, we're like, oh, yeah, you're, you're like, that's how I like football. I'm a massive Manchester City fan. Yeah. So every time I see Manchester City post, I'm like, yeah, I'm liking it, I'm liking it. Then we'll have like one bad game or a couple bad games and I won't like it as much. Then they'll show me something. Yeah, make you that will happen. Like, or like, yeah, exactly. Like that. I don't like something I don't like about another team, and then it'll make me love Manchester City more. So then I'm back interacting with that, and that could change for anything, right? You know, if you're pro some, or sorry, anti something, anti something, anti something, and then you sort of like take a step back, and then it'll show you like, oh, this is this is what pro X Y Z are doing. And then you're like, oh no no no, I should be anti this, and vice versa. Yeah, the way the algorithm works is very very suspicious, very tricky. But that is a reality. And as long as you have that awareness yeah. of that, you can develop your own but news feed and timeline. That's what I want this part of the podcast to do for people is to raise your awareness to how much you get sucked into a narrative. Of course. And it's like, you know, always question every narrative. That you, as soon as you abs, you're, as soon as you're absolute on a belief, I believe that you should challenge it. Like in terms of like challenge it from and and see a different perspective of it because otherwise you're just gonna you could just live there for the rest of your life and it could not even be true. And how many people do we know together that have, that have like gone out in the world, taken on a narrative and live with it, but they're living this unhappy life predicated on things that aren't even true? Of course, and it's just like whenever people are anti metaverse and you know like all that world, then I'm yeah. like, dude, trust me, it's it's way too late. We are already in a metaverse. Where people see likes, people see followers, yeah. people see, you know, someone with a big following say a certain belief and people believe it just because they've got a following. And, um, you know, like, that's why whenever, I'm, whenever I make content or when I started making content, I wanted to do something that's completely different. No agenda behind it. Just genuinely just have a laugh, you know, like just straight comedy, which, yeah. which wasn't happening during lockdown because everyone was just like angry or sad. Yeah. Which is sad. Like, looking back now, it, like, it was sad. Like, a lot of people were just sad, and I understand, because I was in one of the industries that copped at the hardest. Yeah. And, um, you know, so the initial thought of making the videos was like, hey, you know what, let me make videos about things. Let's remind people of the good times, the stuff we used to see, and the stuff that we're seeing right now, and slowly build up off of that. When, so. when, when did you start to think to yourself, do you know what, this, this, I'm onto something here in terms of, like, this could I could pot- potentially monetize this, potentially have a career doing this, maybe go and do sold out shows, all this kind yeah. of stuff that's that's, that's going to come for you on the back of this. Because obviously like you were driving down the road the other day and you were looking at Melbourne comedy festival sign and, yeah. and like this, and you're not far, you're not far away from that at all. Like, and, and beyond that, like, do you know I what I mean? I just missed this year's one. Yeah. Like just. So the applications happen to close, I think in Jan- December, January. Yeah. But unfortunately, when I had the idea of like, cool, I'm confident of doing this, would would have probably been like end of January, start of February. But in 12 months time, when you go back to that comedy festival and the application time or yeah. whenever it is, yeah. you're going to probably have like a million followers across your platforms. You're going to be even bigger. The, the way I look at it is reps and sets. Yeah. You know, I'm just, for every video I make, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's like crazy viral or whether it's, you know, below average, it's just reps and sets. You know, I just got to show up make good content, have a laugh, um, you know, just stick with my true core beliefs for when I first started making content till now and just keep going. And from now till the Melbourne Comedy who knows, something could even come even sooner. Do you, do you, I, I don't know how old your kids are now. Do, do your kids see you on social media yet? They're, they're too young. They don't, they're, they're they don't understand the concept of social media. However, there, are, there is extended family that will be like, oh, yeah. like I'll see them at a barbecue. They'll be like, oh, you hit 200K on TikTok. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. You know, like, you know, there are, you know, extended family that do watch out and see, because it's one of those things with content creators or social media, right? Someone like yourself, Frankie, who's who's very fortunate to meet different people um, on your podcast and everything, whilst everyone else, I think sometimes we lose touch the fact that certain people don't see content creators that often, you know, whilst yeah. people like myself yeah. and yourself, it's just like an everyday thing, you know, make a video for me. It's almost not autopilot, but it's embedded in my weekly routine. So like whenever I am putting out content and doing it, like I just get so caught up in actually doing it that I never take that step back where everyone else is. Yeah, and think oh well, like I've achieved this much or I've done this much. Sometimes, sometimes, like I've I've been taken aback a few times because like the first time 
I started because obviously a podcast is like obviously it is on YouTube and that, but my but like I've got more more traction on Apple and Spotify at the minute, but the YouTube's growing, right? But but you, but but when when I started getting recognised on the street, when I was going to like Sydney or Melbourne, and people started stopping me in the airport, going, "Oh mate, I love your podcast, love this, yeah. love that." It's fucking, it's surreal, man. You, you can't you can't like like it makes you proud, but you're like you, you, you're like fuck. You're so caught up in it, right? Yeah. You're just doing the episode because I'm even cause think I, about it. Because I'm just thinking to myself <laughs> every day. I'm like, like today I've just been like. Oh man, like I, I, you know, I got got Rashid, I got Ted on the podcast. Like it's it's fucking on, like Donkey Kong. I'm just yeah. fucking hyped to get here. <laughs> this this that will be rep like eighty three, eighty four. And do you know what I mean? It's just like I'm just thinking about, you know, keep keep putting out the keep getting these banging guests, keep getting this content out there because when I get to episode one hundred, I'll I'll be able to look at the top and look down, and see what we've got, see yeah. see see where we've got to. Yeah, of course. Same same with you, but then when it's like people. People that are consuming your content sometimes come up to you and they just they just completely take you off guard and they're like and they bring you back to reality of like ah oh, you know you are making a difference in the world you yeah. are actually having some impact on people yeah you know you change that person's perspective that day Ted like or or my podcast helped this person you know go from this state to this state it's like that's not as be- that's a beautiful thing and that is the power of content and why I think everyone should put out content at some form form or enough. But yeah, I think you have to discover what is uniquely you. I st- I'm still trying to find that myself. Yeah. I st- I th- I'm still learning, bro. I think the key is tasting. Like just, you know, do a bit of everything. And then whatever you enjoy doing is something you keep on doing because you're just going to get better at it, right? Yeah, you yeah. know, it's it's very easy. Like, you know, when I used to do, I won't say like competitive bodybuilding or whatever, but, you know, like when I used to yeah. train and everything yeah. was very meticulous with my training, with my eating, just like most Instagram people and people can like even scroll back way past like in my past like two or three years where I was training, posting photos with captions and, you know, you think to yourself like, oh, you know what, like, you know, I just get big, I get shredded and, you know, just post like not inspirational captions but captions that, you know, will really resonate with someone and, you know, that yeah. could go somewhere. And then like after posting, like training, like I did train for myself, but you're, you like you always showcase you and everything. But, 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 but you are training for yourself, but then sometimes in the back of your head, you're thinking, but I'll look good for social. I'll look good for this. Look yeah, good of that. course. Yeah, and yeah. especially like, man, you, you, when you're young as well, right? You just want to showcase your hard work. You know, I'm eating right, training hard and everything. So like you're showcasing your hard work, putting out captions. And like the more I did it, I remember someone coming up to me and they're like, oh, you know, you should do copywriting. And like make yeah. captions for other influencers and stuff like that. And the initial thing before I started making videos was I wanted to be a ghostwriter or start up an agency that will come up with content for content creators and influencers. You know, people who are at like 100, 200, up to a million followers. So you wanted to help them help them get the yeah, funny, so, funny content out yeah, there? Yeah, the funny so. content out there. I'll write it all. I'll script the tone of voice, synopsis, everything. I'll write it out and I'll do it. And I remember telling my friend, and he's in digital market, marketing. So I'm like to him, hey, like I've got this crazy idea. Like it's very left field. It probably hasn't been done. Or at least, I oh know it hasn't been done in Australia. I want to be a ghostwriter for these content creators. And then he's like, oh, like it could work, but like you haven't done it yourself. So like, how are you going to prove it? To, like, how, how are you going to prove yeah, it? How you gonna it? Yeah, how are you going to sell it? How are you going to pitch it? <clears throat> right, if I'm going to go up to Frankie and be like, hey, you know what? Like whilst doing podcasts, do these videos and then you're like, okay, well, show me videos. And then I'm like, oh, shit, like I haven't done any videos. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. I started making videos to thinking, prove your own To content. sort of prove. Yeah. And then that naturally just built up and now like I've reached the point where if I write for anyone, there's almost that trademark to it where people will be like, like people tag me on TikTok in other videos and they're like, oh, this this sounds like yeah. and I And I'm like, oh, shit. Like I didn't realize like, I've created, you know, a signature style of my own and everything like that when I initially just wanted to do it so I can... Yeah, because... Happy it, to be like a director, like in the back, you know, behind the scenes and everything. Because because the, the way that you the way that you do the videos and the way that you speak is very, very, you know, very straight down the line is to, in terms of like, it, there's no one like you, mate. Like, you can't speak like you're in... You, 
no one can imitate that style is what yeah. I'm trying to say I mean you so, did a pretty good attempt mate I, I <laughs> 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 so, that's, that's, so, that's a pretty good yeah. attempt, honestly. Uh, yeah, I sent him a DM. I, I said, what did I say? What did I say? You do it because you, you're, you're pretty bad. No, oh, uh, man, I think you said something along the lines like, I'm hyped for this podcast and you can't change my mind. So, uh, something nah, along those nah, lines. No, 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 no. Oh, you fucking hell. You said, you said something, uh, along, yeah, so, something along, something along, anyways, something, but you said it. Yeah. And then, like, almost immediately, you're like, no, 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 I've got to, I just got to work on the accent. I've got to work on the accent. And yeah. I said to you, two weeks in the area. Yeah, in, in the area. You'll be leaving with a pair of 270s and the accent down yeah, pat, man. Yeah, mate, the shoes on. Yeah, 100%, 100%, man. 100%, mate. Get yeah. the TNs on. Oh, of course, man. <laughs> yeah, mate. Fucking, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is unique, like, you know, the way I say it, because you're originally from the UK. Yeah, yeah. You know, with the UK, you know, if you think about it, like, five, ten years ago, it was just like, oh, British, drinking tea and everything was over the past five years, especially with social media. Now you realise that there are all these subcultures in yeah. the UK, you know, that you know, there's your Jamaican, there's your Nigerians, yeah. you know, there's your British, there's your Chavs, there's your, you yeah. know, lads, there's there's many different subcultures. And I feel like in Australia You're gonna do like, really well in the UK when you do stand up comedy there, bro. I hope so. We'll see. All in good time, you, man. You, you, Speak it into existence, definitely. It, it, will, it will happen. It's yeah. all coming for you. Well, it's all it's all coming for you because <laughs> I, 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 I know I know I'm I know I'm I'm catching I'm catching you on 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 the wave to where you're going. But I know I can already see where you're going, bro. I appreciate that. I can, that, I can really see it, and a lot of people in Australia can too, mate. Yeah, oh, hopefully. Like, because, but because this is the subculture of Australia, so you know, like for whenever people are like, oh, you know, you're unique, you're unique. I'm like, no, I'm not. Uh, like to me, I'm not unique because everyone around me is like me. However, yeah. the people in like in you know other suburbs or other areas or even like yeah. in Perth or Brisbane, Adelaide, they're like, "What the hell is this?" Because you're in your own bubble and you don't you don't see how unique you are in in terms of the world because you're surrounded by people that might yeah. speak similarly. Yeah, but it's, but we all have a different personality in this. Animal. That's that's what that's <laughs> that's why we should all be putting out some form of content. Of course, hundred percent. Because, because Bill, this is the best thing I ever did was invest in. I mean, people call them personal brands, reputations, whatever you want to call them. But yeah. to invest in yourself, to put out content, and to and to constantly to do that, and to do the reps, and just to be get better, and to and to work in the world while the world is watching you, of course, and learn and reiterate all the time on that powerful shit. Yeah, of course. And and actually, not many people are willing to do it. I think because a lot of people haven't found their why. How okay? How would you how, how would you find your why? For the, for the audience out there that are looking for their for their why for their purpose for their je ne sais quoi to do to to go out there and, and take what's theirs, how would you find it? I feel like it start, all starts off with passion. So if you're passionate about something, um, you know, I'm the type of person when my back's against the wall, I work a bit better. Yeah. Right. So when my friend challenged me, who's a very good friend, shout out to Ferdy. I bet you he's gonna watch this. Um, you better you know, watch when, it. <laughs> when he like when he challenged me of like, yeah, like yeah, you're funny. <laughs> what videos have you made and I'm like shit like this guy's onto something because he's right you know if I'm going to sell it to like from top of my head like a Tammy Hembrow or like you know like a big influencer yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah alright cool yeah alright you can make funny content where's, where's the evidence so for me like I had my back against the wall when my friend did challenge me and I'm like alright my why is not necessarily proving him wrong but proving myself right yeah, yeah, you know yeah, backing yeah. myself yeah. being like I am confident in this product yeah. We, which is myself, which is my personal brand. So some people need to find their why in the sense of, you know, whether they're building a personal brand or a business. Because you don't have to necessarily build a personal brand. Like it's still 50-50 out there. Yes, people follow people instead of following a business. However, content can go both ways, right? Yeah. As a personal brand, yes, people will follow you. People will love you. People will think. But there are businesses that are doing awesome with content. Like, you know, as much as I have my beef with them, Red Rooster, yeah, they're doing, <laughs> which is real like has been like yeah, it's been like war <laughs> for me and Red Rooster. But you know they're you know peddling off of um you know like all the jokes that they get about them being a money laundering business or them having yeah. no customers. Yeah, so yeah, most yeah. of their content is around that and proving people. But you're but you're you're <laughs> making them relevant by talking about them as well. Yeah, of, and I yeah. think it, like it goes both ways, it's, right? It like actually I'm, helps them. It yeah, helps of them. course, it helps them because all them fast food restaurants like Macca's and everything else that you're putting in KFC, you're like whatever you said about the Zinger box at yeah, like 12, 12 it should, should be covered by Medicare. No, yeah. um, no but <laughs> the Zinger box can solve any problem, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, that's true because, you know, whenever someone's hungover, Zinger box. Yeah. Whenever I like to go out, like I have a Zinger box, if like if I'm feeling like fast food, 
not very often, but whenever I do feel like fast fit, I'm like, yeah, you know what, a zinger box will go down good. So you know, it is good clout for them, good um, you know, like pop popularity or whatever. Yeah, because I see all the restaurants were all commenting on your shit on TikTok, weren't they? Yeah, of course, man. And you know, and there's they're bannering messages. each other, and it's just, yeah, it it, it, it it it's it's it, it helps you grow. It helps them get recognition. Everyone, everyone's involved in the comments. There's thousands and thousands of comments going off in these things <laughs> of these restaurants fucking commenting on it. And yeah, it's just, that's what you've that's what you've started to cultivate here. Of course, you know you humanize these businesses, right? Everyone just thinks of KFC as shops, and then when you see them comment on a video, you know that's free marketing for them, right? Yeah. Someone you see you see a comment by KFC or McDonald's or Red Rooster, all of a sudden you're like, mm, I, I, I actually feel like it. But so what, for them, it's free marketing. But what I've noticed about these brands now is they've got quite humorous marketing managers because yeah. it's the marketing managers and the marketing execs that are responding to these comments obviously yeah. as the brand from behind the brand but some a lot of these marketing execs now have got I, I find a sense of humor one of one of the best um like in terms of like responses is like gymshark brands like that they're yeah. res- they've got really good responses and, and really really well thought out stuff that's actually quite funny to the marketplace and and it's like when you get when you get content creators like you just you know having having your bits and, and yeah. getting people to comment and then they're coming in battling it back and it's just it just makes it more of a happy type thing yeah of course uh, like i said it, it all comes down to humanizing the business you know for example jim shark i think one of the best like marketing thing was do you remember at, at one point uh cameo yeah where you, you know you pay money to celebrities and they'll you know wish you a happy birthday or yeah everything. i saw that yeah, yeah and yeah, then yeah. they're like they sent money to celebrities, and they said, and they, and they wrote the name, the name was Jim Shark, like yeah, yeah. as in J I M, yeah, 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 and then yeah. Shark, and people yeah. were saying, "Oh, happy birthday, Jim Shark!" Yeah, like these massive celebrities, so they pranked them in a way of, you know, thinking like, "Oh, these people genuinely cared about Jim Shark," but really they were, they were just doing a cameo, and then like people were commenting like, "Oh my god, this is crazy!" and then. There were some celebrities that probably took it like, oh, man, I can't believe this happened to me. And there are some that are like, man, you actually got me good. And then, you know, for them, it's a personal brand. So it builds up their personal brand where the people are like, oh, you know what? These people can actually yeah. take a joke. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so, it's that just, that is, that just shows you what you can kind the kind of the, the, the stuff you can create and the, and the movements you can kind of create on the back of just thinking originally. Yeah. It's like there's, there's, when you inspire kids to get on there creating content or when you inspire, you know, people our age to go out there and start making content, Ted, they, they got to realize they don't have to mimic what you're doing. They have to find their own voice within themselves and then go and create that content. Yeah. And you, when you put content out into the world, it brings you back opportunities. Of course. Like there's opportunities for me coming in. There's opportunities yeah. flying in for you. They're going to be flying in for the next 12 months and beyond. And that's the difference, guys, when you listen to this. It's like, you know, if you're, you know, some of you might be listening to this and we've done a lot, we do a lot of podcasts on business and stuff. And, and, and there's another reason why I wanted to get Ted on here today. It's like, and, and want to get more content creators on there as well. Show you there's, there's, there's ways to, yeah, Ted will formulate this into a business, but he's a content creator and he's putting out banging content. But it's just to show you guys of how you can start something really low tech, like in terms of like just you and your iPhone, start putting out content, start putting out reps, and then you can create something, you know, for yourself off the back of that. And then you can work with brands and stuff like that and just to try and encourage more of that. And it's funny because two minutes before this podcast started, we were talking about how like iPhone has become the same if not better than the tech out there in terms of like recording video yeah well I, I just, <laughs> like, I just uh, said you, you don't need like you don't need the DSLR anymore you don't need a GoPro you don't need I've, anything I've, you just need your phone I've gone to iPhone Cinematic to record the podcast clips because it's better than the, the HD GoPro Hero 9s or 10s or whatever I had and everything else that I've got, and all and all these other all these other cameras I've had, yeah, it's just it's just a better quality camera. Like, and and you you know a lot of us are, a lot of us are lucky enough to have these in our pocket in yeah. Australia, in the UK, in America. If you're listening, whatever, whatever, we're all lucky enough to have these. And there's, there's no excuse really why someone like you've grown to what two hundred thousand on TikTok. Uh, you know, you, you're going to be at a hundred k probably by in the next couple of months on Instagram. By the time you get there, you're I think you're at eighty odd now, aren't you? And then it's like no, I've, I've surpassed the hundred. Yeah, yeah, just rec- just recently surpassed just, 100, just recently yeah. past hundred. So yeah, so they, there you go. Like you're at three hundred three hundred thousand and growing all yeah. the time, and it's like that just goes to show you the power of putting out content out there. Yeah, and 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 one thing that I think you've probably learned is the delayed gratification. On, yeah, on on on, on the because yeah. I've had to learn that, bro. Yeah, 
I can uh, imagine, man, you're 80 episodes in. And you're, on, you're like, you're only now questioning, like, oh, okay, say if this was to become, like, something that gets monetized, like, how do I do it? And that's 80 episodes. Like, there are people that make three, four videos and give up, three, four yeah. podcast episodes yeah. and give up. And it's like, dude, it doesn't come that easy. You think Joe Rogan sits there on his, like, 50th episode and was like, oh, man, well, the money should be coming in now. Yeah, yeah, The yeah, money yeah. didn't come. Like, he didn't sign his Spotify deal up until he's, like, a thousandth and beyond episode. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, that's yeah. the big payday, right? You know, yeah. YouTube, yeah, YouTube pays decent. But what Spotify paid was, you know... 150 million dollars right? they, they say 150 some people say 200 if reaches certain benchmarks yeah 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 and, and that's the big pay there right it, and he didn't reach it till over a thousand episodes so got, like people are putting out like three four pieces of content and me and like oh that's it that's me and it's like nah man if you look <laughs> if you look at the content creators out there I looked at a content creator from the UK the other day called uh, Jay Jay Anyway, he's, he's, he used to be called Grenade J, but he's J, Jay Alderton. Jay Alderton's a, a guy in the fitness industry. You might you might recognise him. You probably know him by face. He, I looked at how many posts he had posted on Instagram yesterday because I thought, fuck, he's blowing up. He's doing well. I like, I like this guy anyway. I've always liked him. And I, and I thought to myself, oh, look, look how many posts he's done. 6,555 And that's posts. assuming he hasn't deleted any. Yeah. Assuming. So, so, he, so, so that's, just on, that's just on Instagram. Bearing in mind, he's got YouTube, he's got Facebook content, he's got all this. It's not all the same. You make a podcast, you know what it takes to edit videos. To rec- like, just recording is a mission. Then you edit it. Then you got to re-edit it for the yeah. smaller stuff like TikTok and yeah. Instagram. And you got to make sure that's properly. And I, I feel like the smaller the videos, the more tedious the editing is. And that's why, like, whenever people come up to me, they're like, "Oh, you know, what what does it take to become a content creator?" I'm like, "You've already got everything that you need." However, it's going to take time, you know, whether the time as in, you know, from your first video till your viral hit or, you know, you might make that first viral hit, but you're going to have to spend a lot of time editing it and making sure that it, you know, when it reaches people's faces on their phone, yeah. they want to stay and watch it. See, I, I knew, and this, this see, I, I agree with everything you just said there, but when I started this podcast, I knew that. I needed to focus on the art of becoming a better interviewer, becoming a better host, becoming a better podcast, becoming a better speaker, communicator. I need to focus on the, this in terms of like the the ping pong, that yeah. just putting my passion into this, which is what I wanted to do. So I, so I from day one, have outsourced all the video stuff, yeah. Because and and got young lads on that, and I find people that not only listen to the content but are also passionate about videography. And I and I just and what I do is I give them full authentic license to edit it however they choose, and I just let them do it and let them and see what they come back with. I don't try and tell them what captions to use on a video or anything like this. I just I just give it to them because I because I realise that this this is what I want to be my my skill and I realise that's theirs. And it's knowing when to what to hand off to someone who's better than you and knowing what to keep in house as well when you're trying to create content. Because as you scale, you know, you might need to put out seven videos a week instead of three and you you know and then they all need to be banging content you might not have the time to edit because you've got your kids are growing up here you want to go out with your wife wants to go out for a meal of bro like you might have to you know bring editors on it goes back to the saying you know it takes a village to raise a kid so you know if, if you want to build a brand it's going to take a team yeah you know whether you're making youtube videos whether you're making instagram videos you know if if the moment i do go go on to do YouTube videos. I'm go- I am going to need an editor, right? Why? Because I don't have time to sit there and edit yeah. because like you said, I do have family. I do have things going on. You know, I do work full time. A lot of people just think like, oh, you know, this is what he does full time. And it's like, nah, man, I've got life. I've got responsibilities just, and I do videos on top. Just to prove to people that everyone, everyone out there has got time to be a content creator. Walk me through your day as it stands right now. So as it stands right now, um, I wake up 6.30, 7 a.m. Uh, my wife usually trains in the morning, so I'll be spending time with the kids all morning, um, you know, just having breakfast with them, keeping them entertained, getting them ready for whatever they're going to do for the day with with my wife. Um, then I'll spend like half an hour, you know, like 20 minutes getting ready. I work in the fitness industry, so I manage a facility, 5,000 square meters, so you can only imagine. Got a team of 20 people that I've got to manage yeah. and a customer base of 4,000 organic 
plus whoever else comes from the other you know gyms yeah that are the same brand but they just happen to come in and visit so there's a lot of teething issues so you know from 10 to 6 I'm just at the gym you know just managing making sure everything is good I come back home dinner with my wife and kids so now it's 7:30 it's yeah well, so let's say 7 um and then from 7 to 7:30 is bath and bedtime the girls go down and then it's video time a video doesn't take two minutes to make. You know, the video might only be one minute, but in order for the video to flow, it takes a bit of time because I might have had a bad day and then I'm in a car trying to record a video, but all I can think about is what's happened earlier in the day. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh man, I can't get into the groove. I can't. So Sometimes it takes me like 10, 15 minutes just to get into the mood, into the groove, you know, and some days, you know, I'm just like, man, this, this isn't clicking and I'll just go back in. And there are some days where it just all clicks like within 20, 30 minutes all comes together. Yeah. And then I come inside, edit and upload. So let's say it's 8, 8.30. So you upload the video at 8.30 at night? Oh, eight, usually 8 o'clock. I try and aim 7. Uh, I tr- so if I record it, I'll upload it either the same day or the next day. So I either edit it to upload it the next day or I edit it to upload it almost immediately. And if I'm banging out two, three videos a week, that's yeah. yeah. That's my days, three days a week that I'm doing, and then every other day will be if I get an awesome opportunity like this to be on a podcast instead of making a video, I'll be out here. Um, any opportunity where I can, you know, read, watch, watch podcasts. I'm a massive fan of watching podcasts. Yeah, yeah. So I'm I always, saw you like the podcast. Yeah. yeah, man. I'm always watching podcasts. Like any opportunity, especially if it's someone I know or someone that I've been on a podcast with. I like seeing, you know, their previous episodes, seeing where the, how they started. Yeah, and, you know, there's also the Joe Rogans, um, or, you know, all the other podcasts that are out there overseas and everything. So, so, so essentially, what you are as a man, you're work, you're 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 getting up at six and you're working till ten at night, pretty much. A, a, yeah, every responding day, responding to DMs, responding to comments. Yeah. Um, I don't have a social media manager. I don't have a manager. So, if brands reach out to me, I'm reaching back, and I can almost guarantee you, any brand that I've worked with, if I call them up right now, they'll be like, "Man, Teddy takes his time replying." But that's because I've got everything else going on yeah. in my life. But you know that goes to show every message that I do reply to is me. Every yeah. time you know I try and reply to everyone that I can, comments or whoever comments, I try and reply to whoever I can. You know when, and I've also got friends that are content creators, so I'm always there. You know, make sure I'm supporting them, making sure I'm commenting. I know how the algorithm works. You know, sometimes I got to like, comment, make sure I share with a couple of friends. So yeah. you know, like I'm working. Even you know, yeah, like no, by instance, no, like I'll be there. You're good. You're good like that. Yeah, you know, you know I'm yeah. like I'm. I try and be as responsive as possible. So by the time like there are some nights where I'm ten thirty, eleven, I'm in bed with my wife, and she'll be like, like "Oh man, I think we need to get to sleep." And I'm like, "Oh no, no, I just got to respond to a couple more people," just because like I love it and I love the interaction. You know, I bring people value, but I also want them to realize that it's all me. I'm yeah. trying to you know like you know, I'm trying to give them the full experience of. Everything. So I give everyone, there's a saying like, you know, walk to me, I run to you. These people walk into me and I'm running all the way with them. If they yeah. support me, I'll support them twice as much back. And that means pulling out funny videos, posting it, responding to people, you know, like, and most people know boundaries. So, you know, I, I haven't had a problem where people are overstepping boundaries or asking questions that are inappropriate. But yeah, everyone that I can give my time to, I'll give it yeah, back and more. No, nah, it's, it's so good, but I just wanted people to really understand how hard you worked and that no one who listens to this podcast has <laughs> any fucking excuse why they can't do it. Because for sure, for sure. Because you're doing the six to, six to... Six to ten, we'll say, yeah. Six till ten at night, bro. And yeah. there's, there's no let up, you know. I love the way that you've, you you don't do any videos. You, you know, your kids come first. Like, you, wanna, you don't want to miss any time with and, them first. And that's assuming my kids... Have a slip, or like have slept at seven thirty or seven o'clock. Yeah, imagine the days they don't sleep. Yeah, I'm up with them till ten, or my wife is up with them till ten. You know, know, we've we've got that, that support and, system, and that puts you and that puts you back. I mean, how does it work with like obviously having having a having a wife? You know, you, you you're young, you're married, you got you got kids together. I don't feel young, but <laughs> no, nah, but you, do you know, no, you yeah, are though, good, bro. Like, like like I know you don't feel it because because having children does that to you. Yeah. But like you know what I'm saying? Like you, you want to be a good husband to to of this course, woman, yeah. you, you know and. How important is it to have such a supportive person behind you? Definitely. Um, you know, like I always say for probably every two videos 
every two, three videos that I release, yeah, fifty percent of the ideas have come from my wife. You know, like I consider her my executive producer. Where you know at the start it was like, oh, you know, you just do the videos. I'll just be in the background. Whilst now she's actively a part of it. Yeah, part of the ideas, part of the oh, you know what, you know, you should say this instead of that, or you know, you said it like this. You know, for someone that I've been married to for five years, she's always you know punching in ideas, or you know, if I make a video and she's like, nah, it just doesn't sound right. You know how many video like people just see the content that I put out. People should see the content that I don't put out. Yeah, you know, I've made 150 videos or 140 whatever videos that I've put out there. How about like the other 50, 60 videos that I haven't put out? You know, that's what like whenever people are like, oh, you know, you're so lucky, you know, that you've built up this platform and, you know, you must be making big money or whatever. And it's like, bro, I bust my ass yeah. every single day thinking of ideas, thinking of um, things like, you know, trying to be as creative as possible. And it's an art. You know, you, it's not something where, you know, I can just walk into Frankie's apartment and <laughs> the ideas are just waiting for me there. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you're getting feedback. And sometimes feedback isn't necessarily, you know, the most constructive criticism, right? It's just sometimes it's just bad criticism where, oh man, you're always on my newsfeed. Or, you know, oh, you know, oh, yeah. You th- do you think you're this and that? You're just making videos in a car and, you know, like I'll get, like, I'll get criticism and just trying to filter through that and like put it all together, man. So there, you know, there are some days that are harder than none, uh, harder than the others. And, you know, there are some days where I just don't feel like making a video. And the most important part is I know also when to take a break. Just take that step back. You know what? Maybe two, three days, just not make a video. It's, def- it's definitely, it's definitely, it's definitely the balance. But it's like, even, even, even now. Look, it's it's seven thirty, eight thirty at night in Melbourne, and me and you are doing a podcast. Yeah, <laughs> do you know what I mean. Like when, you know, you've come away from your family to do this, and yeah. it's like you know, because it's, it's you've got this time. You know, you've had to put the kids to bed, and then you come here. Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like people. Um, the, the, there really isn't any excuse why you can't create content. The the question is just like. You know, look, looking. There's books out there like "Start with Why," "Find Your Why" by yeah. Simon Sinek. There's yeah. there's things out there that there's courses out there. I think Simon Sinek has a course on finding your why on his website yeah. for like a hundred dollars. Yeah, like there's no excuse for for the, for you not to pull from these resources or ask other people uh, how they've found their why and and start talking to your purpose to find theirs. I feel like you know two things that a lot of people don't do is you know find their why or you know also like love what like do they re- like. Some people just want to do something because everyone else is doing it. Yeah. You know, oh, like I'll do content creation because oh, they're doing it. It's easy. I should yeah. do it too. And the other thing is that people are too scared to invest in themselves. You said that Simon Sinek has a $100 course. A lot of people be like, man, I'm not going to fork out four hundred, uh, like $100 or $400 or $1,000 to pay for this course. Yeah. What am I going to get out of it? And it's like, yeah, but if you get to the end of that course and you find your why, the yeah. ROI of that course after you become the biggest content creator as a makeup artist or as a you know book writer or anything will be a thousand times that hundred dollars if you are genuinely passionate and you find your why and you put those two together and just keep working at it. Who knows? You know, you you can find your why and be like, oh, I want to become an author, and then you know by the time you finish that book, you sell you know hundred thousand copies. <laughs> if you just like get two dollars per book that you sell. That's two hundred thousand dollars, but all you did was really invest that hundred dollars in a course that was the catalyst to making that book yeah. or making that piece of content well, that gets you there, right? This this is this is delayed compound growth, mate. It's like um, you know, it, but let's just forgo the money a minute, right? Yeah. Let's just forgo the money. Yeah. Even if me and you made no money, right? No yeah. money out of this. Like, say we did it for a, I did podcast for another year. You did comedy for another year. We made no money, right? Yeah. We've had a fucking good time doing it. <laughs> we've we, had the biggest we've, laugh. We've had the biggest laugh. Yeah. We've learned a lot about ourselves. Yeah. We've improved our communication skills because we've talked to camera. We've talked in front of thousands of people yeah. right, online, which, is, which, which can only cement your self-belief, right? You know, you've been ridiculed by some. You've been loved by others. You, you know, everyone has a fucking opinion when they're not doing it, when they're thrown from the sidelines. He, he, You've met all these people. You've you you you've 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 you, do you know what I mean? You've met all these different people. You've you've sat down with all these. You've you've talked to all these different brands. You've worked with these different people. Even if you walked away from it, then you're not telling me that your life hasn't dramatically improved from when you started, and it wasn't worth all that time and all those reps. And you're not telling me that the skills that you learn in that moment aren't applicable to other things that you go and make money out of in your career anyway. 
I think the best example of that is 50 Cent, Curtis Jackson. Yeah. Had his music career, had everything going on for himself. Once upon a time, was bankrupt. Yeah. Bankrupt. Everyone made a joke, became a meme, and everyone on the internet was having a laugh about it, whatever. You know, go, like just like most memes has a life of like one, one or two weeks. And then you look at him now, you know, with the TV show Power, with everything that's gone on. So he went to zero and came right back and if not tripled what he made in music. Why? Because he had that experience. Skills. The skills, the stuff that you build up, the network that you build up. You know, sometimes it's not about the money, you know, or like most times it's not about the money. It's about the skills you acquire, the people you meet, because I know if things were to turn to zero tomorrow, the people that I met along the way up until today will always lend me a helping hand back up. Yeah, 100%, mate. Like being, being mates with people like yourself and Oscar and, you know, meeting Davey Foggett, he owns the Udi and having the High Smile Boys yeah. on and building those relationships of with course. people. Yeah. That, that to me is, 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 is fucking priceless. You can't, you can't put a, a dollar figure on having those relationships, being able to call them people, having those people in your phone book. Yeah. That, that to me is like where, where the value is, if like if this all goes to zero or, or, or doesn't, never makes me a dollar. Like, yeah, I'll have to retire and have to go find something that that does make me money in the future. If that if yeah. that is the case, whatever. Yeah. But like, at least while I've done it, the skills are transferable into something else, which is what a lot of people don't understand. Is if you sit there for three hours writing a caption for Instagram, your best caption ever, just because that caption didn't bang the way you wanted it to bang on Instagram feed, doesn't mean that your time was wasted. Because that time, you're you're refining the art of copywriting. Of course. You're refining the art of editing photos. You're refining the art of editing. See, even the clips that you've put out that probably haven't gone as viral as others, you've still done the video editing reps on those clips. If you look at the video that I released, the first 10 videos that I released and the last 10 videos that I released, the difference in editing, quality, delivery, jokes, like, Everything, even like from the synopsis, from the way I start the video to the way I end it, like you won't believe the difference. And that all comes down to reps and sets and doing it again and again and again. I know. And And there are some videos where like I remember releasing a video and I remember this vividly because this is the one thing that will always like play in the back of my mind where I think I made a video, I think I had I overheard an argument or a discussion about apple juice versus orange juice and I just... Like I'm like, you know what? I just make a video about apple juice versus orange juice. Why? I don't know. I just overheard the discussion. And I remember someone commenting, sending me a message, sending me the video, messaging me being like, ah, oh, like this is, like this was terrible. This is like the beginning of the end for you, almost in a way. And I like, I remember just like looking back and I was just thinking, like, like, peep, like I just made one, like one video that I thought it to me was funny because I can always look back yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good because now it's a referral po- a reference point where back then, you know, like getting 10,000 views to me was a massive achievement. Whilst now like 10,000 is like uh, within the first few minutes. Um, but yeah, like just having comments like that and everything just pushed me to do more. Like I said, I work best when my back is against the wall. And, you know, I look back at like videos like that and I'm just like, wow, man, I didn't realize how far I come. But, uh, you know, there's no such thing as a bad idea. Sometimes you've just got to like put it out there, whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether the subject matter is good, whether that's bad. Sometimes it's worth just getting it out there just to get it off your mind because well, yeah. my, some of my best videos have been ideas where I'm just like, no, nah, I don't think people will like it. I don't think people will enjoy it. Like, like one of my biggest cough, one of my best videos about coffee and that idea was in discussion between my wife and I for three weeks. Really? Three weeks of oh, no, I don't think it'll work. No, 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 you should. Oh, no, people will get to be sensitive. Oh, I don't know. Coffee. Okay, cool. We'll sleep on it. A week passed. Second week passed. Third week, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to make this video about coffee. And then it just blew up. Like you're talking people from the Middle East, people from Canada, Europe, which is messaging me being like, this is the craziest video I've ever seen. Crazy as in a good way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's a bit of Melbourne lingo, but this is the craziest funniest video I've ever seen because it's so true everyone starts off their day with a coffee so everyone has a connotation with whatever coffee they drink yeah. so you can relate to them personally which means that you can go with that video you can relate now because of the nature of that video you can relate to millions and millions of people rather than just a small small minority of people yeah. so you know because every literally like caffeine 
starts the world. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, mate, I've been addicted to the stuff before. Like, it's not good. You don't drink coffee anymore? No, no, no not coffee. I was addicted to energy drinks, bro. Oh, Bad that's, idea yeah. for me. I've been 40 days clean. Like, 40 days <laughs> clean. <laughs> you, you make bro, it sound like bro, it's a drug, man. Bro, it is a drug. It is a drug, bro. 40 bro, days clean. Bro, I'm 40 days clean. No one lie, right? I used to, I used to, mate, I was like a crackhead on fucking monster energy drinks. Seriously. How'd you get into it? Well, that, that's what I want to know because... Like uh, so, you're talking about uh, Monster Zero, I'm assuming. Yeah, Monster Monster. Right, I tell you, right. Okay, how did this all it, start? Like, okay, what I want to know is how did it start? When was the point that you became like, oh shit, mate, this I is t- messing me up. Okay, when I used to go out as when I was like 18, like when I started to real hit the clubs in the UK and go out clubbing, all my mates were drinking. I was around the boxing environment and all that kind of stuff, and around that and I didn't drink, smoke, do drugs, nothing which I, which I still don't, right? So obviously all the boys are drinking so when I'm going out they're having like vodka Red Bulls and they're having beers and all this shit in England and I'm like okay, I'll have a Red Bull then. So that's how it started. Okay. But I never really liked Red Bull but then but then monsters started to come on the scene and I'm it, like... It's funny you say that because I go on thinking back to every time I've gone clubbing they only serve Red Bull. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> right. So there's only a few places in England that serve... Um, the Weather Spoons in England, which is a rough old place, okay. they 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 serve monsters and stuff like that. But anyway, that's that's how it, how it started, yeah. just like that. And then I started to when I was when I needed, I started to have pre workouts for for the gym because Jack 3D came out. Of there. Do you Ooh. remember Jack 3D, bro? Yeah, of course. Shit, that's bro, yeah, that's that, lethal. That is that that that's is lethal, right? So so this. So you're talking the white tub, the original, the, the, the original, right, yeah, bro? Okay. How fucking good was this stuff? That's, yeah. yeah, the best pre workout that to ever exist in mankind sent me into the fucking stratosphere. Yeah. So I rem- I remember right. So it, graduating from Monster to yeah, Jack 3D to Jack 3D. Yeah. I remember watching two kids spar right, and there was a kid who who wasn't heavy handed. He wasn't heavy handed kid. He was knocking people clean out. Like with, on Jack 3D, like we were all taking like three scoops of Jack 3D. There was <laughs> <laughs> three scoops before before yeah. sparring, before like training this that, and the other. Even 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 when I went to IB for years ago, bro. Yeah. Like I needed uh, all the lads were drinking. I was like, I need something to get me into into amnesia yeah. at twelve till yeah. four in the morning. Jack 3D, bro. Bag of Jack 3D into a, into a bottle of water that cost me twenty fucking euro, and I'd be dancing. <laughs> so this is where my addiction to like yeah, these, caffeine. Caffeine and the highs that could yeah. be get off this pre workout. Sounds stupid, right? Yeah. Next years go by, I'm now smashing pre workouts before gym, a pre workout to wake me in the middle of the day, right? I'm having three cans of monster a day. I'm completely f- my adrenals are fucked. But I was I was on another 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 continent with, with <laughs> forty days ago I was on another continent and I just got to the point, I was doing some breath work, mate, and I was in I was breathing, and I was like like I've got, I've, one I'm, thought. I'm like, you got to give up caffeine, bro. You have to give up caffeine. You just came to me. That's like, just you speaking to yourself. Yeah, in my head, I'm like, you got to give up caffeine. You are dying. You are dying. Like that is how fucking that is. I, I laugh and I joke about it on here about all this stuff. Like, yeah. but when you bang so much of that, Ted, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> sent you off into another course, dimension. Yeah. <laughs> and it's and it's not good, mate. That's that was my that was my caffeine. But even like going from one scoop of Jack Three D to two scoops is yeah. like a massive difference. I can't imagine what three scoops would have been like. Yeah, three three, been three scoops back in those days would have been. Uh, it's always six hundred milligrams of caffeine. Six hundred to eight hundred milligrams of caffeine, yeah, easily. At, but it wasn't the caffeine that sent you off into the stratosphere. Yeah, it was the one point three. It was the it was the, it was the one point three DMDA D, D, DMCA. C-A-M-C-A. I don't know D, DMMA. <laughs> yeah, fuck me. That's yeah. one molecule away from speed. That stuff. Yep. It sent me. It sent me like a loony yeah, too, mate. It was, yeah, there, it was there, there was an, an, strong stuff, man. And when it got banned. When it got banned, did it only get banned in Australia? Or was that a worldwide? It got ban? banned in Australia. It got banned in the UK. It got banned. It got. It's only. It's only legal now in one state in America. This, <laughs> <laughs> which state? I don't know. I, I'm trying to get something. Don't worry. But, but mate, honestly, like it, there was boxes getting banned on drug bans, everything. That stuff. And that's that. That that that's how. That's that. That's the caffeine, mate. That's it's, how. It, it's funny that you say it's been banned in the UK because I'm pretty sure like performance enhancing in the UK is like okay. Like fairly chill, the laws there compared to everywhere else in the world. Do you know what? Right, that I've I've seen more. Was like, that just like a joke? A lot. There, there are quite a few lads that are on are on the gear on the roids yeah, yeah. in the UK, right? Yeah. 
But I think in Australia, it's 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 prevalent. And and the and do you know what? Do you know how many women take gear here? Yeah, yeah. So it's fairly normal here, man. Or well, maybe because I work in the gym environment, it's like normalized to me. But yeah, it is very normalized. I think the difference between the UK or even overseas and Australia, overseas people will take performance enhancing stuff to be bodybuilders or to perform better in their sport. Right. People here will take performance enhancing drugs <laughs> just to go to a festival, <laughs> just to go down the beach, like just to look good. Like it's wild. Yeah. Like the culture here, like with performance enhancing drugs is crazy. Not like Mate, working in the that, fitness industry. That is a video. That's it. Like pe- that is a video. Like, people will take peds to just be a waiter. Like well like just you know, like <laughs> oh you know, I just want to be the biggest guy in, in my university campus, so I'll just take yeah. <laughs> yeah like, it's a personality trait here. Hundred percent, bro. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, 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 yeah, like it's a, not for bodybuilders. Like in the UK, you know, you've got all these bodybuilders and they're very cult like in the UK, right? Yeah, yeah. Or even like, you know, my background's Moroccan and you know, in Morocco the people who take, you know, steroids are you know, bodybuilders. We only compete. We only take steroids to compete, and then once we compete, we're done. Yeah. Whilst here, it's just like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'll take this, I'll take that. But bro, like, I go, I go, I go, I go into like a few different gyms, and everyone tells me they're fucking natural. And I'm like, man, I'm I'm in all right shape for 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 my, for my age now. But their definition of natural is completely different to us. Like for them, a low dose is natural. Yeah, yeah. Which is scary, <laughs> right? Like, Human growth yeah, hormone it's, like, oh, it's not natural, bro. Yeah, of course like, not. They're like, man, my testosterone is only like 10 <laughs> times the normal level, but I'm natural. It's like, bro, you're not natural. It's like, no, 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 I'm just cruising. I'm like, what do you mean you're just cruising? Cruising, bro. Like eight, 10 times the natural, you you're know. You're taking two mil a test. Yeah. That's not cruising, bro. Nah, that, nah. That's a cruise missile. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much. That's a nuke. Okay. Right there, like yeah, it's it's wild, and you know the def- and that also doesn't help that you know, like I said in Australia, there are those subcultures yeah, of man. like people will just see these small groups in like America and the UK and Canada that are like just bodybuilders, like not everyone, like a lot of people in the US are obese, but yeah. they just see the subculture of bodybuilders, there and they're like, nah, that's what we've got to do. And I was like, no, nah, man, you can just train and <laughs> eat good and but I don't, and I, look pretty I, decent. Bro, there's certain nationalities in this country that are immigrants of Australia. Yeah. That whether it and they fucking love gear. <laughs> like, it's, just, yeah, like to them, it's almost like ah, oh, you know what? It's just it's part of the gym. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So like to them, it's like ah, oh, you know what? To do gym, this is what you got to do. That's I, why it's like that. But no one, no one speaks into the the how many women are on gear because because this is a sensitive topic. It's a I sensitive think. topic. It's, it's a sensitive a, topic because. You know, we live in a time where, like, number one, speaking about, like, performance enhancing or, like, anything down that alley is seen as, like, oh, you know, it could get police onto me or, like, that's why a lot of people, like, avoid it completely, um, especially if they they are in that industry. They don't <laughs> want to speak about it. Yeah. And then, you know, like, speaking about it with women is everyone just only speaks about the successful cases, but no one speaks about the major minority that, are not the same. Their body isn't mm. the same after they're off it or after they decide, you know what, I don't want to be a bodybuilder. I just yeah. want to be, you know, like I just want to focus on my career and stuff like that. And then, yeah, like it, that's why it'd be awesome to have like an endocrinologist who's a hormone specialist on would, the podcast who would speak about this stuff because I feel like, especially on Instagram, people are just throwing darts with a blindfold on, you know, when they're speaking about this stuff. That's why no one, it, like it hasn't really hit off. Mate, I'm telling you, as I see a lot of these IFBB, uh, WBFF girls, and I'm not saying I know for sure, but when I look at their body, I'm like, Clem Boot Roll. Do you know what I mean? Like, because, because of how lean they're getting and the way that they, and the way that they get lean, I can just see it. Like, because I know boxes that have been on it. And I know how it. I know how it brings you in. I know. I know the look of the like. Like it's not just. It's not just. I know. And everyone's like, yeah, but diet, diet, diet. It's not. It's not. Some some people just can't get that lean with diet. Just can't. Some people just can't shift those last parts with diet. And the problem I have with it in society these days is the fact that because we're all going on Instagram, because we're all on TikTok now, because we're all on these social media platforms. We all go there and without, even yourself, you look at other content creators and you're like, oh, fuck, why didn't I think of that video? Why didn't I do that? Imagine you're someone on there that, that's not comfortable with their body now. You're a female and you, you know, you're know you beautiful, but you just don't feel like you're, you're hottest or you're a man and you're in great shape, but you just want to, and then you go on there and you see someone 
that's worked really hard in the gym. Don't get me wrong, they've worked yeah. really fucking hard. They have. They work they they work their ass off. They eat fucking great. They do. But they don't tell the truth about the other stuff that they put in their body to get that way. Not just that, I think people also fail to realize that a lot of these people on Instagram it's their job to look like that. Yeah. You know, the average Joe who's working as a trade, who's a bricklayer that has to wake up six in the morning and finish at 4 p.m. Can't yeah. look like that. You know, they look yeah. like that because their job is to prep. Their job is to look good. You know, they get paid to look good, to look a certain way because they've got to sell their services. Or, you know, like whether it's coaching, whether it's yeah, supplements, yeah, 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 whether yeah, yeah. They, they have to look like their that. Their business is on the back of that. Exactly. When you were a bodybuilder, right? Yeah. Was that... I mean, I'll use that term very loosely, but yeah. <laughs> where, like where, when it was a major part of my life. Yeah, well, when, it, when it was a major part of life, did did you did you experiment on the, on the stuff and all this stuff? And that, no, that? Uh, like funny you asked me that because I've been natural this whole time and then just before the first ever lockdown, like when COVID became a thing, I remember like speaking to my wife and I'm just like, you know what, we've had two kids. Uh, sorry, like we're going to have a, like, I think my second was about to be born. And I'm yep. just like, you know what? Our life has just been like the kids, you know, her being pregnant. I'm like, you know what? I'm just, I want to try and experiment, take a bit of testosterone. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I was like, all right, cool. I'll just like get in shape because I didn't want to take it because the thing is with performance enhancing drugs, you take like, it's it's like putting nitrous on a car. Yeah. You put nitrous on a Toyota Camry. It's just a Toyota Camry with nitrous. <laughs> <laughs> you, put, you, you put it on a Mustang. Then like you're flying. You're a Mustang. Yeah, mate. you're a Mustang yeah. with, the, with nitrous. <laughs> so I needed to go from like a Lexus to a Mustang. Do you know what yeah. your missus was thinking at this point? Your missus was in bed thinking, hang on a minute, if if, if I'm already up till t- 10, 11 o'clock at night with videos, if I give this geezer testosterone, I'm going to be up but, till three in the morning. <laughs> so the, but this was before the videos, right? All oh, right. And yeah. I was like, you know what? Like, I think like the time has come. Like we've had two kids. I think like this is the one thing that I want to do. Yeah. If you like, if I have your full support, I'm gonna jump on minimum dosages. However, like, just very like, if I speak about any of that, a lot of people will be like, "Man, that's nothing. <laughs> that's what you consider natural." In that. <laughs> like, oh man, like you're a pussy. You're yeah. only taking that much. Yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, like I just wanted to experience. So I'm like, you know what? I'll just get like a bit leaner, and you know, like shape up. Like just really just clean up, clean around the edges, and um, jump on. And then there was the word of. COVID-19 hitting and like mm. things were getting really serious overseas. So I just took that money, took my family to Queensland, Noosa. <laughs> and I'm just like, no, nah, I'm not jumping on anything. And I just left it at that. And yeah. just like never like but, ended up buying anything or going on to any, but like I had enough knowledge and I was surrounded by good mentors and people in the industry that would really look out for me if, you know, yeah. I like uh, not in terms of supply, but in terms of just knowledge of like, hey, I messed up here. Don't do the same mistake I did. This is uh, what this that was, that's is, yeah. the best part about working in the fitness industry. This is why I do. This is why I love doing this podcast as a conversation and not as a pre-planned thing because yeah. you never know where you're going to fucking end up. Yeah, I mean, uh, we set <laughs> it up for gear. But like, do you, do you know what? Right. Yeah. While we're on this topic, like, um, obviously, like, T is it is a, a testosterone replacement therapy TRT TRT yeah. TRT. Like, you know what? That's that's good for a man to have that after a certain age. Because definitely, be, yeah, be, it has be, its benefits. Uh, yeah, because because most men should go on TRT after a certain age, not for bodybuilding. I'm talking yeah. about just as a natural way to 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 keep to keep everything firing and, and lively. Because testosterone is 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 if your mood starts going down, you start to feel low mood yeah. and all this depression kind of stuff, kicks in. and and depression kicks in, and and you start to feel uninterested, uninterested in in your wife, or uninterested in your girlfriend, uninterested, uninterested in, in yourself, in, yeah, in your life, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then TRT is a valuable tool to be used at that time to to start to you know to boost to boost yourself back up to 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 beyond natural levels definitely um I've, you know there are a lot of benefits with TRT and all of that stuff and everything cuz everyone that jumps on testosterone and I'm talking like you know whether they're 18 or whether they're 25 or whether they're 30 40 everyone like within the first two weeks is like man like life just feels so good like every man you speak to that jumps on that bit of testosterone, they're like, just, yeah, everything is just yeah. so good. They sleep better. They wake up better. You know, they're like, you know, I'm waking up and I'm just like, life is good. Yeah. And they're like, I've never felt like this. And I'm like, yeah, well, that's what happens when, you know, the one hormone that's, you know, it's like the the dominant hormone in your body well, of testosterone is, you know, high. 
you're going to feel like that. So that's why I like the benefits of TRT is when you reach 40, like a lot of people, you know, reach that midlife crisis, like, I don't know what I'm doing. Is this what I really want? I've worked hard and like I've really got to know where and everything. And then they just have that bit of TRT or testosterone and like everything just... TRT would save relationships. Not be- just relationships. Be- 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 because, because you imagine, be- you imagine, Ted, yeah? A, ma- a man, when he gets to a certain age, starts to drop off. The yeah. woman starts to go into an Indian fucking summer. Yeah. She's fucking like wants, wants it seven times a day. Yeah. And you, you as a man, like, <laughs> bro, I'm not. Yeah. I, I, I just, you're crashing. Yeah, you're crashing, right? You, TRT is, is TRT would save relationships, yeah. I reckon. Not just relationships with others, but also relationships with, with yourself. yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, because yeah. improved mood, improved like mm. hormone regulation, improved um. You know, like improved sex life, improved um, you know, like even muscle. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. I'm not saying going to look like Arnold, like Arnold or something, or like Ronnie Coleman, but you know, you're, you know, I think someone who's never taken anything and takes something is, you know, like ha- sorry, has taken that low dosage to start off. Within 12 weeks, without training, they naturally gain that muscle. Yeah, I think it's like they gain muscle, but not as much as someone who trains and diets. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you yeah. know, you're going to look better. You're going to feel better if if your clothes feel better you're going to feel more confident. If you're more confident, your outlook on life is just, and perception is just going to be that much better. Yeah. You see, I don't see, I I don't, I don't see, um, like human growth hormone and, and testosterone. I don't see them as performance enhancers when you, when you get to a certain age as a, as a a man, woman or whatever. And you, and you need to use them to, to, because like, obviously human growth is like, meant to be like the fountain of youth when you get to a certain point in time. I actually wouldn't have a clue to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I was reading, I was, I've read studies on it. It's like, yeah. you know, it, but it's all about taking it, like what, what we were talking about earlier on the podcast was when people bang that stuff when they're like 18, 19, 20, when their natural test levels or their natural or, or like basically like women and men are taking drugs too early like in terms of performance enhancers. Yeah, they? of course. But when you take them on the back end, like like in terms of like after, after you're like you're 35, you're between 35 and 40 is when you probably meant to take, start taking TRT yeah. and all that stuff. That's some fucking, you can get some incredible benefits from that. Yeah, of course, man. And you know, that could also tap into some mental health as well. Yeah, you know, just co- like confidence thing and a positive mental outlook on life. I love it how you swapped that <laughs> for a holiday in Noosa. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I was just like, all right, pack up, ladies. <laughs> we got on Noosa. I'm like that money that I was going to spend on any kind of performance enhancing. I'm like, we're just going to go Noosa, Duh. just enjoy one last holiday yeah. before we lock down, and then that's yeah, what happened. Yeah, yeah. Like, we came back from Noosa. My wife was due to give birth like within like three months. Yeah, we'll just go Noosa explore like we've never we had never been like noosa so we're just like yeah we'll go explore and then came back and sure enough i was training from home and that's it and then the mustang turned back into a turtle crawl do you you ever think you'll consider doing it again like i think in the future yeah if if, because i'm I'm 100 percent open mate if if i ever if i ever drop off start feeling like i'm dropping off the side of a cliff like I'm like I'm I'm going straight for the TRT. Like, yeah, I, I think I think there's room for it when I'm when I'm in my forties. Like when, right now, like mm. I'm just happy training, eating. Like I'm I've got no competitive outlook. Uh, like in terms of like competing in a bodybuilding show, or anything like that. You know, I just train. You know, I work in the industry, so naturally I do have to train. I do have to eat. I do have to supplement and everything like that. However, I feel like when I'm 35, 40, th- there is probably room. Like when my kids are in primary school, yeah, and mm-hmm. I can actually like got time to you know just train hard eat well, you know, my wife, she trains like a power lifter, so, you know, like, she's strong, so, she, you know, my motivation is off of her as well, and she is very, like, understanding, which helps, because a lot of people that want to jump on are usually, like, single, and they're just like, oh, you know, I'm just doing this because, you know, so for some people, especially at a young age, they're like, this will get me girls. <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah, it does not work like that. Nah, it just attracts more guys. Yeah, yeah, They'll yeah. tell you, like, oh, how much are you taking? <laughs> you know, yeah, it's an, it's attracts it's, more guys. It just attracts more guys. Oh, what protein are you taking? Oh, what dosage are you yeah, taking? Yeah, because I know they all stand there in the change room talking about how much testosterone they're taking. I'm yeah. like, bruv, you're in the wrong game, mate, if yeah. you're taking that to it. I think that's what pe- people, in this podcast, we've learned that people quit content content too soon and take testosterone too soon they're just like, like do you know I mean? and girls if you're taking clenbuterol and all that stuff stop it it's, it's not good for you man like ruin, it ruins your menstrual cycles and all sorts of shit yeah you like you hear your stories there are people that do it correctly people that do it incorrectly but i think the sad part is some women are taking it in, like a lot more women are taking it incorrectly than correctly 
Yeah, yeah. And that's enough you know, for the basis of you know, a coach without any science degree, without any yeah. like like real in depth knowledge. I feel like there's a lot of bro science in the industry. Yeah, you know, and, you know, I've, you know I've, and I've been a victim to bro science. Yeah, like my first men's physique bodybuilding have, prep was like very bro science, and have you like, done, I hate brown rice because of it. I hate tuna because of it. Just because, like, at that time, like, oh no, you should only eat brown rice because of this. You should only eat that. This, like, you know, rice and broccoli and chicken. It's like no, like, you can eat other things, you know, and do other things and still get shredded. But because I was a victim of, you know, no, 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 you know, the boys do this and people do that. And then, like, I just learned, like, I yeah. hated it. And same thing with the repercussions of taking, like, clenbuterol or any performance-enhancing drugs, you know, because on the back end, a coach only cares about you whilst you're paying them. So, so you, true, bro. After you stop paying them and you want to take a different avenue, mm. most coaches won't look back. They won't reply to your DMs. They won't respond to your texts because you're no longer paying them. Yeah. So if you you know like want you want to get off the gear and just you know just train for leisure, they're like, no, nah, I'm not interested. You know that's you know a general population transformation isn't really impressive compared to someone who's never taken any gear. Someone twelve weeks after taking gear and it's just like, whoa, man, that yeah. sells. And you know we're a victim of it. You know we look at transformations. We're like, oh, fuck, man, this is insane. James Smith showed me his pictures before and after gear when he was on gear as a, when he was a rugby player back in the UK, and I was like, fuck me. Yeah, like it's, it's, it, you're talking about like there's there's kilos of muscle. Like yeah, talking, you're talking eight eight to twelve kilos that they reckon in your first. Like if your receptors are fairly fresh, and you're taking high quality, eight to twelve kilos. Yeah, and you know like people lose a, like two kilos of fat and see a difference. Now imagine eighty a, adding eight kilos of muscle, lean yeah. body mass. Yeah. yeah, onto you. You know you're just gonna look like a whole different person. Clothes are gonna fit better. Everything's gonna fit better. Um, you know, people complimenting it's, it, it, it's you. So, gets to you. It's it's so easy to see why people always want to take the quick the quick drive to to, to to whatever success is perceived at. But it's like if you take the quick drive in the content game, you know, if you rise, if you rise to the top too quick or you or you get there too fast, you come down just as fast. That's why I tell people: whoever makes videos, make sure. Oh, like not make sure you, you can never make sure, but don't pray for your first five to ten videos to be a viral hit because if your first five or ten videos if one of them is a banger no one's going to have content to look back on they're just going to think oh yeah this person's a one hit one that made one good video yeah, and that's yeah, it yeah. even at that whilst if you make like 50, 60, 80 100 podcast episodes and your 100th episode is amazing yeah that trickle down effect is priceless yeah of people watching all your other episodes and being like Fuck, look where they started to yeah, where they ended up you know look you know, like people look back at Joe Rogan's first episode. Yeah. Oh my God, that's like the biggest disaster I've ever watched. Yeah. Of yeah, his podcast, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you look at him now. You know, the, the highest paid podcaster. You know, same thing with content creators. You look at their first ever YouTube videos, and you're like, Oh my God, this just, is scary. It, it just, it just, it literally is life. Is all just about just to keep going. Yeah. And just find out what, like, obviously, pod podcasting's not the podcasting's becoming. The, like the thing to do like everyone wants to start a podcast but everyone but, wanted to be a personal trainer everyone wanted to be a DJ yeah. and now podcast is that but, new but, thing but, 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 but podcasting is one of them them arts that there's lots of people with podcasts but there's not many people with podcasts doing it doing it to, to, or putting their heart and soul into it <laughs> it's funny you say that because there's this comment on TikTok and it's on almost every third or fourth podcast video yeah and it's a top comment every single time and as funny as it is, it's also true. And the comment is, not every conversation has to be a podcast. <laughs> yeah. And like, we laugh at it. Yeah. But it's also true because there are some conversations that are like, you know what, you're probably better off, you know. Not, but that's why the best podcasts are always surviving and, yeah. you know, like keep on going. Then after, and then there are some people that will do People are probably sat in their car right now thinking that about me and you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Well, who knows, right? And then same thing with yeah. like my videos. People will be like oh, not everything that you see has to be a video. And it's like, yeah, but you just, sometimes you just got to put it out there and you really never know who's hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. sometimes, you know, there are certain topics that I know that I will never make a video about. Well, a lot a lot of people reach out to me and you and they'll ask you about your video, ask you about becoming a content creator or ask me about... Getting you know, a guest get, on. Get, get, or po podcast or getting a guest on or something like this, yeah. And they ask, and, and the first thing I always say to people is like, find out if 
voice communication and, and video communication is, is your best asset. Because a lot of pe- some people are great at taking photos. Some people are great at writing. Some people are great at speaking. Some people are great on videos. Some people, you know, some people can put a couple of these things together. Some people can get can get better over time. Some people can't. Like you, generally need to, need to feel out what it is that you're that that you, that you like the most before you can go and pick a medium. Like in terms of like pick a podcast, pick a blog, pick a pick social media. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm a gun at videos. But get me to take a photo. I'm fucking shocking, man. So you I am sh- shocking at taking photos. So you like, walked into what you're best at. That's it. And that that's what I do. You know, that's why I barely post photos. Or people, you know, like a lot of these content creators and influencers will be putting up photos of themselves. Me, I just whip out like the camera and I'm just like, oh, oh no, I don't think I can do this. Or like even if someone stops me in the street and they're like, oh, man, like me and my wife watch you. Like I just need to take a selfie with you. Like is it all right if we take a photo? You feel like they'll take a photo and I'm just like, I don't even know what to do with my hands. Like I'm just <laughs> smiling at the camera and I'm just like, what the hell? Like I'm very awkward like that. Whilst, you know, there are people that are just love taking photos and are good at taking photos. Like women, perfect at taking photos. Yeah. But get them to do a video where they're speaking to the camera, many of them can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. scary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and there's and it it it's that's a fucking true statement. Like yeah. that not not play to like, your strengths. That, that you gotta play to your strengths and, and like I'm never gonna fucking look like you know, one of these fucking beautiful Instagram models, like, yeah. well, I'm not going to mention her name on here, yeah. but, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I look at someone, I'm like, fuck me, like, how, the aesthetic of that photo, the light yeah. and everything, how the fuck do you do that off an iPhone? Because yeah. I knew she did it off an iPhone, I'm like, yeah. fucking hell, cr- crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy skills. It's a skill. Yeah, it's a skill set. That is a skill. Yeah. That is a skill, like, to look like that in every photo, to look immaculate, this and the other, me and you would be sat there looking like a beach whale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much man. you know what I mean you know like not even a fuel cycle save us yeah mate, mate but you know some of these some of these people especially with, like I said it's I think it's mainly a female thing like you know like my wife will take a photo of a 10 out of 10 of my uh, like of our children then I'll take that same photo of our children and I'll look at it and be like oh my god I know you got you, you got the lighting this? wrong you've not yeah. balanced the image yep. you've oh, not no. turned up the brightness the focus oh no you gotta do it from here not from there There's and I'm just th- like bruh there, there's there's yeah. so much there's so much pressure, man. But mate, honestly, this this podcast, I've, the, the the topics we've discussed, I never thought I never thought we'd even go near. Like, yeah, geez, oh, this, definitely. Uh, oh, I didn't think we'd be speaking about performance enhancing. <laughs> here we are, like, mate. Yeah. You got to do a video on that, bro. Yeah, yeah. I think, you got to do. There's a video. I in think that. I'll save that for like my live show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. When when are you, when do you reckon you're going to be on the live show? I'll definitely do the Melbourne Comedy Festival and the Fringe Festival. Yeah, sure. yeah, fringe. fringe, fringe in Edinburgh. Uh, no, or no, no, uh, South Australia. South Australia. <laughs> Whoa, man, you sent me overseas. Yeah, but uh, Edinburgh's got a big comedy festival in Edinburgh. Like um, Scooter's been on it, and uh, you know um, G- Jim Jeffries been on it. Yeah, like like this is that's where that's where you boys go I'll, and cut I'll your cloth. Plan, I plan on scaling overseas. We'll see. Yeah, I think I, think I feel like I want to do some home shows. Who first. who who kind of inspires you? Here? Like who kind of like, Dave Chappelle, man. Yeah, Dave Chappelle. Dave Chappelle's the goat. Yeah. Fuck, man, he is... Like, man, I can't even put it into words. Like, he is the goat with everything. From the moment I saw him in, like, grade five, grade six, downloading his clips off of LimeWire. Yeah. I don't want the FBI or <laughs> yeah. the federal police swooping in. <laughs> yeah, but... but yeah, you're, downloaded you're lucky. it illegally. Ha- watching his videos then and watching his videos on YouTube from Comedy Central up until his... Re- most recent Netflix special that he's been cancelled for. He's been cancelled. Yeah, something about transphobia. Like they took oh, a bunch of his mate. So they, uh, so pretty much they took like a bunch of I jokes hate, and everything, yeah, and they like bro. tried to cancel him. But Netflix has backed him and signed him on for two more specials, even yeah. though people have tried cancelling him and everything. And it's like, man, like if you watch the whole special, it's completely different to what these people have put out there. And everything. So to me, he's the goat. Like going back, back then, all the way through till now, he, he'll be the greatest comedian in my opinion. To me, and he's someone that I aspire. And if I do, do stand up comedy, which I will, and like I said, Melbourne Comedy Festival is the most likely, you know, yeah, like yeah, start for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there's they've got the international stage and whatever, but you know, I've got my people, I've got my support, so I'm happy to do something a, a smaller, but a whole bunch of shows. Just to make it more intimate, mate. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, yeah. it's gonna snowball for you, mate. Hopefully, we'll see, man. Mate, like, I, 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 I can change between now and then, man. 
Mate, I want to do live live shows with the podcast, do podcasts with an audience, and do you know what I mean? Have, a, have yeah. like 800,000, 10,000 people watching. Yeah. I want to, that's my dream, bro. Like, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to make that into reality. I don't know how I'm going to do it yet, but I'm going to fucking do yeah. it. Like, no so, I, stop you, man. So, I, 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 I see that for you as well, mate, yeah. in front of thousands of people. Like, it's going to, it's, it's, it's definitely going to happen, mate. Yeah. All, all, all in good time, man. I, like, for me, I'm just putting in the reps and sets. I'll take it day by day. And then once the applications do open up, I see myself put in forward for that and the Fringe Festival in South Australia. And then I think Queensland and Sydney might have to be private shows where I'll, like, I'll have to organise my own stuff. I th- and yeah, I th- yeah, see I th- if I can th- get I a think, touring agent. Yeah, mate. Like, I think you could, you could, you could, mate, you've got enough of, enough of a following, enough of a cult following now to do 100, 200 seats in your own venue. Yeah, put of on course. Your, put, on your own, <laughs> put on your own show, man. Fuck yeah. it. Like, why not? Yeah, that comes with a bit of stress, but... You know, no, nothing but, nothing good comes without a bit of stress. That's what I was going to say to you, though. Like, Dave Chappelle, I love Dave Chappelle's comedy, but, like, the way that Hart did, um, the way that he structured his business deals, Yeah, he's the goat at business deals in comedy, bro. I think um, when it comes to stand-up comedy, definitely Dave Chappelle, when it comes to endorsements and everything, Kevin Hart smashed it. Yeah. However, I think Dave Chappelle grew up in a time, or at least he grew up in a time where, like, if you're a comedian... You do comedy. Kevin Hart grew up in a time where there's social media, there's business endorsements, yeah. Nike and everything. So it's two different eras. And go and buy Dave Chappelle's interviews and talks. He seems like a top person. Like, I'm a comedian. Yeah. I want to get paid for strictly doing comedy. I'm not endorsing anyone. No one's endorsing me. I'm just happy doing my shows. But what but what what Hart did, what Kevin Hart did was um he More than a comedian. He yeah, but yeah, but not not just it wasn't just endorsement deals. It's the it's the fact he owns the rights, like he produces the show. IP, yeah. So he owns the intellectual property. Yeah. So even if he's going to be on Netflix, he owns the 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 whole show. He 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 owns all the film crew. He owns yeah. eighty films, the whole thing, da, 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 and presents it as a finished thing and sells it to the platform for a limited time and then sells it to other platforms too. Yeah. That for 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 a comedian businessman is fucking smart moves and this is and this is where a lot of people don't understand everyone looks at should i buy commercial real estate should i buy this should i buy this nft should i buy crypto should i buy residential real estate should i buy shares should i buy blah 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 intellectual property is the one that no one talks about and everyone should focus on because intellectual property is 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 what you're going to make the most money out. Some of my mates have made fucking hundreds of millions out of intellectual property in the UK and it, it gets overlooked on every score, intellectual property, and especially for creators, owning the rights to your stuff. That's why NFTs make sense to me. Yeah. Um, you know, like a lot of people don't see... NFTs are kicking off or, you know, they'll say there's money laundering and everything. Well, to me, it does make sense because especially if it's a prominent artist, you know, like put aside the utility aspect, like if it's a token utility, yeah. like whatever you get access to, like the actual art and intellectual property could be worth something in the future. Yeah. You know, so you really never know, well, especially you, if it's a one of one. Well, you can sell an NFT uh, in, it, you could sell 50 NFTs or 100 yeah. NFTs that allow... Um, early access to a show or early like early access or 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 front row access to your show to your next 10 shows over the next 10 years yeah of your choice yeah you know and that for a creator like you for creators like me and other people like change the game yeah. you know the way the smart contracts are written you can sell <clears throat> access consulting to you like a phone a 15 minute phone call to you for an nft per year yeah. redeemable all this kind of stuff is where people should start looking into it because yeah. that's that's where the value of the nft is that's, what, that's what, the what what's tied the image itself and all that stuff is not where you want to look it's the intellectual property i mean i own a world of women right yeah. i don't know if you've heard about world of women heard of it. well in my opinion i mean this is not investment advice but they're going to be the uh the bored ape of the female space yeah the crypto punk of the female space so you know you got eva longoria has got one you got you know huda katan has got one you got jennifer lopez you got all these girls rihanna christina aguilera madonna all these girls now have all bought into this project you know the floor price is between seven to ten ethereum but what people aren't realizing is if you buy like a decent rare one 
if you even if you buy any of them in the collection, but even if you buy, let's just focus on I got the seventeen hundredth one in the collection. What people don't realise is, not only do I get royalty fees because it's in the royalty club, so I get paid a royalty fee for the afters aftermarket sales. So not only is this NFT that I've paid X amount for, I think it was about four Ethereum when I bought it. Not only is it I got, not only have I got the uplift in value, it's probably going to be worth about hundred Ethereum in the future. Honestly, this project will blow up. But then you've got the the, the you got the royalty you got the royalty fees coming in from this NFT, right? Yeah. That's that's wired into the smart contract. And not only that, they're doing a nut, they're doing a secondary release, and I'll get a free one of the secondary release. It'll also be worth like four or five Ethereum, like mutant apes or to board apes. Yeah. And, and forget all that. What people don't what people fundamentally don't understand about NFTs at the moment is the fact that like the image itself is my intellectual property of that woman. I can put that woman on a football boot, on a t-shirt, on a hat, on a this, that, and the other, and sell it, market it, raise its value. That's all you. And it's, it's your IP. And it's my IP, right? And and I have unlimited IP rights on that on that piece of intellectual property. That is where people don't understand NFTs. It's like when you get into the blue chips and you start, how much is the IP of a crypto punk or a board ape worth on the side of a football boot? And people are attaching their 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 avatar their personal face to to a bored ape and it's like you know what i mean so like if you've got if you've got fucking michael jordan's bought this bored ape and you buy the jordan top that you got on yeah. right and it's got jordan's bored ape and the, yeah. and the and the guy and, the, and his logo you're gonna buy it right yeah of course and he's got a saleable asset yeah and that's that's what i mean but and and he can charge people even more for printing it on a t-shirt. Yeah. And it's a, it's a valuable space for people to get into. It's right? a it's a wild world and it's only going to get crazier. Um definitely IP is severely underrated. Um you know rights to music because there are like I'm pretty sure there are artists doing now like NFT albums. Yeah. Like you can't listen to the music unless you get the NFT. That one that will give you mm. access to like eight songs or 10 songs or whatever. Yeah. So you know there's a lot of opportunity for creators out there. We'll see say what the future holds it's, it's going to be a very very interesting time it's, in the it's, it's a ma- it's a massive it's a massive time it's a massive there's a massive opportunities and i just want everyone that listens to this to really go out and understand that even if you don't want to go and have the e-commerce business maybe you're the content creator but just find your medium do you know what i mean that's why i want to bring ted on here to, to to give you that to show you someone who's working you know 15 16 hours a day and still making time to make videos with it you know and still having time with his kids and <laughs> loving his wife and all that stuff yeah. if there was one piece of advice right if you had to leave the world tomorrow ted yeah. you're not gonna because yeah. you, you can't because you're too fucking funny <laughs> right but if you had to leave the fucking world tomorrow right yeah. and you, you had to check out and there's and you can't leave anything but you can just leave like a like a, some pearls of wisdom to the world yeah. that you'd want that you'd want the people to to pick up listen to and run with in life yeah. What would you give them? My number one advice right now in the time that I am in and my current existence, do whatever you need to do because people are going to talk anyway. People are going to talk like whether you're doing something, whether you're not doing something. There's been times where I've been doing nothing. People still talk about me. There are times where, you know, like like I make a video, two, three videos a week. Yeah. People are still talking about me. People are going to talk regardless. So whatever you have your mind set on, you may as well do it. Whether it's taking performance enhancing and like competing in bodybuilding, <laughs> whether it's content creation, whether it's yeah. that candle business you want to start, whether you want to start an eyelash business, whether you want to be that n- new personal trainer on the block, do it because people are going to talk anyway. People are going to talk whether you know you start a business and fail, whether you start a business and succeed, people will still talk. Yeah. So just get started. And do whatever you feel like you need to do, especially if you're under the age of 30 and if you've got no responsibilities attached, sorry, less responsibilities attached to you because once you get married, that adds a complexity layer. Once you do have kids, that adds a complexity layer. And, you know, that goes for, you know, like all sexualities or everything, like no matter what it is, as soon as you bring someone else on board, whether it's a business partnership, whether it's a relationship, there's a layer of complexity. So whilst you don't have that, take advantage of it. If you are in a relationship or in a marriage, before you have kids, you can still take more risks. Like I'm taking risks whilst I have kids. Yeah. So, you know, that's why like when I get kids, like when I get teenagers coming up to me or people under the age of 25 and they're like, oh, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that. It's like, do it. 
And they're like, oh, but I don't know. And I'm like, nah, you know. You just, you're just not doing it. Yeah, mate. I, f- I feel you on every level with that. And, you know, one thing I want everyone who's listening to understand as well is, like, a lot of people will DM me, right, and DM you, and they'll say, you know, I want to I wanna quit this job and do this and pursue this and this and this, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm unsure. And it's like, I need everyone that listens to this to understand one fundamental thing. There are no, there is no risk to you quitting your job because jobs in this country and in many Especially Western... Especially in this country. In this country and, in Western, Australia. and Western world, there's a lot of fucking jobs and there's not enough people to fill the fucking jobs that we've got. Pretty like, much. And if you quit your job as a fucking cleaner to do comedy on fucking TikTok and it yeah. doesn't work, you can always get another cleaning job. You can of always course. get another PT job. You can yeah. always get another carpentry job. Yeah. You're always gonna, you can always get another plumbing job. You of can course. always go and be another electrician. There is no fucking fundamental risk and this risk, this risk profile that people build within themselves is 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 a comfort blanket for them not doing what they re- what would really light them up in life. And I want, if there's anything that this podcast can do, I'd like it to remove that from your life. Simple as that. Definitely. You know, you are your own barrier. Yeah. In most cases. Yeah. 100%. In most cases, you stop yourself more than anyone will ever stop you. Yeah. Period. And that, and, and fucking hell. Oh, oh, and no, that that is, that is that is it. That is that is our uh, that is our ending it. Because I just really want that to hit people between the eyeballs, mate. I just want to say, like, mate, I'm fucking buzzed to finally meet. I'm, I'm buzzed oh, to. Uh, thank you so <laughs> it's much. A pleasure. Right? Thank, it's, it's thank like, you for coming on and talking about performance enhancers with me. I never right? thought we were going there, but no, we went there. I'm, I'm happy mate, to talk I'm about fucking, anything, man. Anything uh, and everything, man. I'm sick, man. Just do <laughs> do me a favor. Follow, follow Ted Aesthetics on TikTok, Instagram, and everything else. I'll link it in the show notes, guys. Do us a favor. I hope you've resonated with a lot of uh, a lot of the stuff that we talked about in this podcast. I hope you've got some fucking value from it. I hope you've had a few laughs throughout it. I hope you've I hope you've challenged a few of your thoughts, a few of your processes. I hope this has given you the encouragement that you need to take action in your life today and make something happen that should have happened a long fucking time ago for you, Ted, mate. I just want to say thank you again, like for just thank coming. you, man. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's it's been a pleasure, honestly. Like this chat was beautiful. Um, you know, like it, even there were some moments where you were speaking to me and I was just like, oh shit, man, this guy has a point. You know, like, <laughs> I, like almost like light bulb moments for myself. So I appreciate yeah, it. No, nah, no, nah, I appreciate it. Appreciate thank it. you for your time and thank you for inviting me, honestly, and coming down to Melbourne. Like this legend flew down to Melbourne, man, for this. So nah, uh, I can't thank you enough. Mate, and, and, and mate, that, I, that goes to show how much you love your podcast as well. Passion. Th- this, this is, this is, this is what, some people don't get right is that when you fucking love something and you just want to fucking see it see it succeed and you want to do you do want to provide value to the world you got to back yourself and that means that you know to if you got to spend a couple of thousand dollars coming to melbourne to get some podcasts and then go back and spend a you know eight hundred dollars editing them up and this that and the other people don't see that and that's yeah. like you know you put two or three grand in but hopefully you guys out there that listen to this content kind of understand that I fucking love it. It lights me up and I want to see you win. So hopefully you share the content and resonate with it and put it in other people's ears and that's all I want. You know what I mean? And hopefully it gives you that shift. I I, I really fucking mean it when I say that to you guys and I look straight down the camera when I say it to you. It's like, I really want you to have at some point in this podcast history, a shift in the way that you think about something, in the way that you feel about something, in the way that you move. If you, if, if, if this podcast gives you that, then that is all I can fucking ask for, mate. And that is why I get people like Ted on to 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 bring to bring the the real life stuff to it. Like, not everyone can ha- be a business owner. Like, you're not all built for that. Like, yeah. so you know, Ted's going to build a business out of his content creation. We need more he, comedians, man. <laughs> but but he's gonna yeah. He, he need more. He, he, he needs he need more comedians. And but also he's going to build a business off the back of it. But he's starting in the content game. So. That's it. I just want to encourage all you lot. So like, subscribe, do it on all the platforms. Much love. As always, we appreciate you. And uh, give Ted a follow as well. It's links in the show notes. Much love. Don't forget to subscribe to the Frankie Lee Podcast.